Hi, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna continue looking at my project Alias City One, which was my entry for Proc Jam 2018 and Seven Day FPS 2018. Um, Proc Jam is the procedural generation focused game jam that runs over a week. And so in this video, we're gonna take a look at the uh, procedural audio, the mainly the music uh, featured in the project. So. I'll just play the project for a second so we can hear some of that audio. And let's maximize. So what we can hear when the project starts, it's maybe a little quiet, but there's this muted low frequency sound. And basically what's going on is that the we have a loop of the music, which is actually a long loop. Uh, I don't know, it's like half an hour long. Um, and it's being run through a low pass filter in Unity so that we're filtering out the high frequencies and just letting the low frequencies pass through. And so we hear this kind of muted, kind of underwater version of the music. So it's fairly subtle. And then as we walk around uh, and we encounter these kind of light sculptures, if we get closer to them, we can hear also quite faintly, I don't wanna turn my speakers up too loud. these kind of other pieces of looping music, these kind of chiming, flickering, sort of generative um, sounds. And so these are being emitted actually from these, uh, from these kind of light sculpture things. And so the way that this is set up is that the uh, we have the menu UI and music is playing the main music loop. Uh, and that's this Alia 3 color library 360 bars. So if I can see how long it actually is, it's 41 minutes long. So it's long. Uh, this is actually the main thing that like is the file size of this. I need to make an MP3 or an AUG version and, and upload it so it can the whole download can be smaller, but I just didn't have time for the jam. And so the what's going on is this is started by this um, randomized audio start point script here. So basically what it does is it jumps us into a random point in the uh, piece and then over 2,000 seconds so however long that is a while my math skills are failing me um, it's fading up slowly from the low pass filter in the audio mixer so if we open up the audio mixer under audio, audio mixer. They've moved all the menus around in 18.3 now. And we look at it. Basically, we have an audio mixer snapshot, which is this music low past, and we're transitioning it from low past to the volume up snapshot. Uh, let's see, can we see? Yeah, we can see the cutoff frequency is all the way up. And it's almost all the way down, not all the way down. It's cutting from 100 hertz and up, right? So we allow through the sub bass frequencies and cut everything else. There's also some resonance, which is going to boost the frequencies around the cutoff so that we're getting a boost at 100 and then that sweeps up and we get this kind of nice, slow addition of high frequencies. So there's kind of two things that are working to make the music different each time. One, we just have this long loop of generative music that we're jumping into in the middle. So it'll start at a unique place. And then this uh, animation of the, or movement of the low pass frequency to slowly bring in the high frequencies uh, and make those audible 
which is going to be happening obviously at the, from the start point. So again, we're going to get a different uh, experience of the music each time as well. So that's kind of the generative side in Unity. Then if we move over to Ableton Live, uh, which is the music software that I use to compose this, uh, we can see uh, what's going on here. So I did this based on a tutorial, uh, something I learned from a tutorial on YouTube that I'll find and link. It's called something like, I think, Generative Music in Ableton. Um, it's by a guy who makes a synthesizer, I can't remember. I'll, I'll link the video in the um, description. And what it does is basically his concept, which is a cool concept, is that you use MIDI effects. So we have this um, random, we're choosing random pitches, right, from a certain number of choices. We're adding some random velocity here. And then here we're gating the random velocity. So we're only allowing through uh, velocities which meet our criteria here set by the range. So this is basically from zero to 43. Velocities from zero to 43 uh, will be allowed through. Then I take those and turn them back up into an audible range of velocity. And then we pass them through this uh, scale device, which confines them to a Locrian mode, right? Which is just a certain musical scale. It won't allow notes that are outside of that scale. Then we have the synthesizer itself, which is being triggered. And then for some reason I have this EQ on it, which is just a kind of season to taste kind of thing. But if we listen to what this actually happens, so you can see these notes would have triggered, but didn't because the probability, and then that note, let me actually, I'll turn up the desktop audio and OBS so we can really hear. So these should, had a chance to trigger but didn't, right? So there's a probabilistic filtering of this line. As you can see, it's pretty pretty improbable that they play. I'll just turn off this gate. Super simple little melody, right? That is then getting massively filtered down so that these only sound every so often. Then we have this one. These are all using the same velocity probabilistic technique. What do these sound like? These are synthesizer hits using an analog subtractive synthesizer. Let's remember to turn this back on. And again, right, that's getting kind of filtered probabilistically. Another um, analog synth that's doing these kind of pitch bend, gliding kind of do kind of things. This was, I think this is a Max for Live synth that sounds like this. So this was actually much more prevalent at one point in the piece and then I massively filtered it down. And there's some, it's a bandpass filter. Yeah, there's an automated bandpass filter that's like every other bar is doing a sample and hold LFO to kind of randomize the filtering of that as well. Um, then we have this one. Oh, that's actually not playing. These are just these kind of noise washes. Super simple. Just a hit of white noise with a lot of uh, EQ, really low, um, just pure white noise with a really low, low pass filter, filtering it down. So it's just this kind of bassy kind of noise. Then we have a sub bass. 
This is just a sine wave oscillator. This is what the notes look like. And then of course we kind of filter that. This one I'm allowing through more often. It happens pretty often because I thought it kind of added something to, to have it pretty regular. And then we have uh, these, these high pads. Plan. Super faint, just a little high texture. And then we have this, uh, what is this? Another kind of high pad. And that I think is everything. And then it's all running through a bus to a reverb. I think I did some side chaining. What is this side chained off of? This is side chained off of something. What's the input audio from B side chain trigger? I don't know, remember what I was doing with that. But so basically, and then if we put it all together, this is without the low passing. We just get this kind of soundscape, you know, uh, that is just kind of flickering and rippling, right? It's obviously not uh, generating, it's most of the note data is, some of it is randomized, but pretty, mostly the pitches are relatively consistent and it's more just about turning things off and on at these kind of random probabilistic in intervals so that the piece never settles into a true loop, right? It never really resolves and uh you know there are these kind of uh interesting moments i think i'm actually missing one or two instruments in here i wonder this may not be the final version of the piece but anyway it gives you the it gives you the idea there's also a couple arpeggiators and a couple things that come in and out uh playing these kind of little little phrases uh and then, yeah, that was the idea. So I thought I was actually pretty happy with how it came out. Um, I think this approach is better suited to this very slow paced, not super dense or complex, ambient, washy kind of music. Uh, if you were trying to do some really dense classical music or something, I don't think this approach would work as well or, or be as interesting. Hello, ambulance. Ambulance adding its own little generative texture to our our experience, our audio experience here, and uh, so I think this approach works well for this type of kind of washy soundscape music. But it's not very hard to achieve, and it's kind of fun to play with, and it's pretty fun to just put this thing on in the background and let it play for an hour, uh, which I did a lot while I was working on the game, um, and and found it pleasant. So uh, hopefully. You found that interesting. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to make this available as part of the source code for the project. So I'll put this up for sale with the itch package uh, of the whole source code. So if people want to just grab it and uh, play with it, that's fine with me. All the stuff in here is open source or built in presets for Ableton. So I think that should be okay, hopefully. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and in the next video, I'm going to talk about the uh, post-processing and lighting uh, and how that was achieved uh, for Alias City 1. So, thanks again.